Okay, I'm representing uh, uh, the Outer Planets Satellites subpanel of the de decadal study, and this is an interim report on a Titan Lake probe study that we're doing. So we we'll start off by taking Bob's VIMS image and stealing it. So we, he's already pointed out to to me that we owe him royalties for the use thereof, but nonetheless. <laughs> Uh, in this figure, this is a, a common element of several past studies. Titan Explorer, uh, Tandem, TSSM, has been to look at the methane cycle, both in its uh, short duration, the hydrological cycle, and also the long-term cycle for conversion of nitrogen and CH4 to heavier hydrocarbons in their deposition on the surface. So. This is one of the clear themes that we are, we're going to carry forward in future missions. Now, in the Titan Explorer study uh, that Ra Ralph led, we, we had four different areas where we thought landing was, uh, would be appropriate. Methane, eth ethane lakes, near cryovolcanoes, organic dunes, and ancient impact regions. And uh, during the TSSM study, when we had the joint study, we started focusing in on the methane ethane lakes. So the focus of this, this study is that we're uh, putting together, um, that JPL is carrying out, is, has a dual purpose. The first part of the study is about defining, better defining what a lander mission to a Titan lake would be for a flagship, element of a flagship mission. But this, a secondary objective is to identify the technology, well, to identify if it's feasible to take a subset of those science objectives and package it and make it happen within a, a new, tech, uh, new frontiers uh, payload or, and cost constraints. So, and then furthermore, we want to define some of the technologies that need to be developed for uh, future missions such as this. All right, so we define four uh, science goals. They're really just further amplification of the two science goals that you've already seen before for TSSM. Uh, understand the formation and evolution of Titan in its atmosphere. Study the lake atmosphere interaction. And study the target lake as a laboratory for prebiotic organic chemistry and to understand if Titan has an interior ocean. So we did not try to reinvent in fact, the, the science traceability matrix that, matrix that Christoph put together and with the help of Pat Beecham uh, that was used in TSSM, we simply tried to amplify upon that. So we're, we're not really modifying the basic intent of TSSM, but we're taking that hopefully one step further in understanding what, what that implies with regard to science. This kind of shows uh, four different mission or four stages of the of a mission. Now I'm going to concentrate for the moment on the flagship option. Of course, there's the descent phase. Uh, the descent phase has science is taking place. Something like DISSER would be taking similar measurements at higher latitudes, uh, as well as something like GCMS, uh, ab obtaining composition measurements on the way down. So that, that as well as um, the atmospheric structure. So it's very Huygens-like in that first stage. Once you get onto the surface, there's a, a, a phase called SGB where you start analyzing the composition of the lake and start the process of understanding the interaction between the atmosphere and the lake. Then at some later stage that we call SGC in this figure, we drop off a submersible. It's the the intent of the submersible is to sample the lake composition as a function of depth to determine the pressure and temperature as a function of depth, to figure out how deep the lake is, and to uh, also um, get to the bottom, see if there's any different characteristics when you have a chemistry that involves the interaction of the bottom sediment materials with the liquid material, with the materials that are soluble in the methane ethane lake. So we think there, and it's important to have a submersible characterization uh, vertically of the lake composition and characteristics. And then finally, there's SGD is a phase where you sit on the a bottom of the lake for uh, 16, well, 32 days in this case, two Titan orbits, and you 
sample with sonar the change in the depth of the lake, and hopefully from that you can determine something about the interior structure. Okay, this is, I list again SGA, B, C, D, the basic goals, and then there's instrument packages that have been, uh, that are mapped to each one of those goals, and you, so you can see uh, LCA, uh, Lake Composition Analyzer, so forth. So there's four different uh, instrument packages uh, that most important, well, there's uh, a GC, GC, uh, MS, for and an FTIR for character characterizing the lake composition. Uh, there's temperature, pressure, sensors, speed of sound, so forth, that were carried on Huygens as well. Um, there's a determination of the, well, there's a TDL. There's actually uh, a mast on this for meteorological uh, experiments where there's composition determination with a tunable diode laser spectrometer at three different levels to try to get interchange of flux of material. Okay, so that's, that's the overall payload. You might want to take a look at that and comment on that because we certainly welcome comments. It's an evolving study. So this is what would be in a full up uh, flagship package. So that's the, the, the objectives, I think I've already described them adequately before, is just land on and prefer, preferably explore the lake at depth while communicating back to the Earth. So that's one of the driving requirements. Of course, thermal design is important, and, and a sample acquisition system is also uh, challenging, both regard to sampling the liquid material and hopefully the sediment material at the bottom. The architecture um, that we looked at we looked at a couple of uh, several, we're looking at several different options involving ASRGs as power sources as well as batteries. Uh, we also are looking at uh, several different communications options. Uh, so we got a low gain antennas that uh, are b being used both for a relay, uh, a cruise relay stage and also for uh, 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 flagship element that might be orbiting around the Saturn system. And in addition to that, we're also looking at a direct Earth communications possibility as well. So that, this is the indicated in this figure. The trade space involves two different power options as well as two different communications options. And that's both for a New Frontiers configuration and a flagship. With regard to the TSSM, the, we have a uh, ASRG power sources that we're considering in this particular example. Um, and the communications will be done with a, a, in, with the, uh, a link to the spacecraft, the, the orbiter in Saturn orbit. For the New Frontiers, we have the direct, uh, we have direct to Earth communications and a, and a relay cruise stage that are being considered. So there are actually three options that are being studied. And this just shows the narrowing of that space. So we're we're also considering, uh, so these are the ones that we actually narrowed down to consider. We've got three options with a kind of sub-bullet on, uh, on the flagship mission as well. All right, now there's also in this configuration possibilities of having a floater only, a submersible only, a floater with a submersible or floater with tethered probe. We haven't, we're not going to explore the flo a floater with tethered probe at this, point in, at, uh, at this point in time, but we are going to explore the options for both floaters and submersibles. This is uh, a, flo a floater submersible uh, drawing artist concept that JPL has put together. So there, the floater is the thing that looks like a natural gas tank on the top, and then there's a a release of the, uh, the submersible from the bottom at some stage in the mission. And this is an amassed uh, that carries the MET or does the uh, meteorological. Um, and this is another uh, floater submersible concept for the direct Earth uh, mission, showing the high gain gimbaled antenna for the direct Earth communication. Again, another artist drawing in that regard. This is uh, a schedule of the activities that are ongoing. The, um, the sub-panel has worked with the last month to put together uh, 
complete a traceability matrix and to get the materials together to support a TMEX study by JPL for these three options that will take place next week at JPL. So uh, if you have any comments or inputs, I certainly would like to hear them. Uh, with regard to the New Frontiers, our objective is not to necessarily define the New Frontiers mission. That's not our objective is to define a new, uh, to uh, demonstrate the feasibility of a mission that has sufficient science value in it to fit within the New Frontiers payload. So we, are, we will descope the science to, the point, to a point that we think that it still has science value, but that it will not contain all the aspects of a flagship configuration. And I think that's the last one. So take any questions. Uh, maybe I didn't follow very well your presentation, but how do you, do you make sure that you land on the lake? It, well, that, I mean, that is a serious consideration. Uh, you know, it's, we've, we've looked at the possibility. There's seasonal aspects to this, too. If there's a 2022 launch, it gets difficult to communicate direct to the Earth from the North. And so we've, we're actually looking at options that would allow us to target e either uh, Ontario Lacus or a northern lake. We don't know if that would be possible uh, at uh, Ontario Lacus or not, but uh, that, that study is part of what we're, we're looking at is the, what would be required. Basically, you, uh, Kim can probably address this, but you have to uh, make some decisions late in the game, right? To because I think this is problem, no problem number one. I think is uh, before making measurements, I think you must uh, get there first. You've got to land on the lake. <laughs> And, and some, some of the, I mean, the parachute deployment is late in the game to try to keep your aero lips smaller. So there's a aspects to it like that that are, are used. Uh, I did not get quite um, the, how you achieve the objective number four. Yeah. So uh, it, it's not clear that what you are proposing is going to address the Titan interior. This is what is right. your objective. Well, there, there's a possibility that if you, and, and this is the weakest objective, everyone agrees. But if, you're, if you can't have a seismology package on the surface and you want to get information about the interior, this is a potential alternative. And the idea is to simply look at the change in the lake depth as a function of the 16-day hmm. per, uh, orbital period. And ver there should be a ver measurable variability and that lake depth that will have something to do with the interior structure, right? And so Jerry Schubert has been working with us in the Decadal Group mm -hmm. to, to try to help define that aspect. It's not his first choice. He'd rather fly a mission that, like Ralph wants to fly, where he puts seismometers <laughs> on different places on the surface. But it's, it's an option that might work in a lake. We have a second quick question. Quick one. Are you looking at the, uh, in the battery, battery option only? Or? We're looking at both battery and ASRG Be, okay. options. Yes. Okay, we had a quick question from Ralph. And then while Ralph is setting up, we've got the, the final um, question in the corner. The, the, the schedule chart showed a, a final report. Is that report to be made public? And if so, when? Well, the way I understand it is the report will be probably not be made public until after the termination of the complete decadal study. Uh, my understanding is that that report will be made available to the sub-panel prior to that time, but not to the public. Okay. Two yeah. quick questions. The, the first is related to the previous one. Is, uh, is other requirements for the pinpointing and the precision landing sufficient to be sure that you will land on the liquid? liquid? And second question, do you, uh, can you be sure that there will be liquid? <laughs> this means uh, if the lake is empty, what are you doing? Right. 
Well, OK, let me try the first one, uh, respond to the first one again. In the earlier TSSM study that we looked at, we did look at putting the, a three sigma arrow lips within Croc and Mare, and it fit well. So that there seemed to be, an, you could target a lake or a sea or whatever. The, from the second point of view, you've got to worry that how, what the depth of the lake may be, may, if it's very shallow or if it's just a pile of, you know, it's just damp. You have to have a mission that will still function in that environment. So if you, if you want to make it work, whether it's in a lake or it's in some kind of marshy area as well, your, your, data, your sample acquisition system will have to function for both. Hunter, I had one question uh, before we close this off, and that is, to me, it looks like you've got an extraordinarily important opportunity to do something in terms of analyzing the lake sediments. Have you guys thought about putting a uh, penetrator analyzer kind of uh, device on the bottom of your uh, craft, basically, so you could do some sort of chemical isotopic temperature measurements? You know, if you go down a meter, you're probing 10 to 100 million years in the past, roughly. Yeah, that's a very and, good and point. It's, and it's a real good experiment. It's hard to imagine going to Titan, going to a lake, without taking a crack at something like that to analyze the sediments. The one thing that we have considered so far is that there is a sample acquisition element that's been costed in this that is not well defined, but that would take at least a single sediment sample, and maybe a core is even a better idea, as you suggest. But some chemical analysis of the sediment itself. 